Hey, Peter Di Stefano. What's going Hi. on, man? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm happy and with uh, my family for the holidays. Yeah, yeah. What got you into playing guitar, man? Um, my father played guitar and sang, and he would throw these parties, and the house was the happiest and feeling good when he was singing and playing guitar. Yeah. And then, um, and he all, he was a tailor from Sicily. My parents were from Sicily. Right. And he came out here and he also did, uh, played at restaurants, parties. He was on the Lawrence Welk show. He played guitar and sang for the Tennessee Williams play, The Rose Tattoo in Beverly Hills. So oh. I was into it through my father. Okay. Yeah, cool. Who are some of your favorite players? Like, what really inspired you to to get into guitar? Um. Well, my father was was the biggest influence, and then, um. I guess, you know, the Beatles, Elvis. Then yeah. it went to uh, UFO. Michael Shanker, Randy Rhodes, Eddie Van Halen, yeah. uh, Jimi Hendrix, yes. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page is probably the most um, influential in terms of complete guitar playing. And then Andrew Segovia yeah. with classical. And then mm. Joe Diorio is my hero for jazz. For learn, for I still practice his techniques and his. Um, he was a guitar teacher at Musicians Institute of Technology. Mm. um EIT for, for a long time and he's passed but he I went and saw him play and it blew my mind and then I love Alan Holdsworth God bless yes. his soul too yes sir yes sir and, uh, mm -hmm. and um so that's a lot and then just like the doors Robbie Krieger doing outside scales and stuff on uh uh when the music's over and there's just so much from, but it's basically bands with mojo. I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan. The Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia is huge, huge. Right. Just, just awesome. the humanity and the and the sincere music that came from Jerry Garcia. Mm. And I'm like, I'm even copying his look with uh, <laughs> just not. Not taking care of my hair or beard. Or <laughs> I was trying to be a yeah. hippie, you know? yeah, a punk yeah, rock yeah, yeah. hippie. Right. What's it like playing with pornos? Porn porno for pyros. Well, porno for pyros changed my life completely. You know, when when Perry wanted to do uh, another project, and the fact that he invited me to be a part of it with uh steven it was it was really great and then you know grateful for all the musicians on the second album that that came in like uh david j mike watt hmm. flea wow and, you know and, wow, we, had wow, wow. we had four bass players on the second record wow. and then uh daniel ash came to play on a song dave played on the song so it was wait, like dave, four wait dave navarro what dave who dave navarro Dave Navarro, yeah. Holy Dave shit. Navarro played on a song Damn. called Freeway. It's okay. called Freeway on the second yeah, yeah, album. Yeah. Played on that. And Flea played on that as well. Wow. And, um, wow, 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 wow. Called Freeway. But it's funny because there's not much guitar on it, but that's the one that him and I played guitar and we just did rhythms and the rest of it was electronic DJ wow. stuff. So. It's crazy, but, man. Yeah, yeah you're, talking, you're talking about electronic. Um so i'm a fan of your solo stuff um oh. the the electronic stuff like how do you get into that man it's like you're kind of uh an alternative player you've got some weird jazzy chords going on like how do you get into electronic man well i well in terms of the jazz start there i was really i i was really because of joe diorio i really wanted to you know, I was playing Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good, and I ran to MIT, and I said, I want to learn jazz, and he told me to play something, so I played Johnny Be Good, and <laughs> he told me, 
he stopped me, put his hand on the strings, and he said, put your guitar back in your case. Put it in your bed. <laughs> Underneath your bed. And don't touch it for six months and listen to jazz. So I drove home crying. I was 16 years old. I just got my license. And, but, you know, I did it and started listening to, to jazz, like uh, Charlie Parker and stuff like that. And wow. then um, Joni Mitchell blew, tore my head off completely. Oh, with yes, sir. Yes. Video called, yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Shadows and Light. So I watched that religiously over and over mm. with John on bass, mm. uh, Pat Metheny on guitar, oh. Michael Brecker on sax. It was just ah. insane. Like it was like jazz, jazz folk music. Like it was just so incredible. So I was like, I want to do jazz punk, you know, punk right. jazz. Right. So, right, right, uh, right. so there's that. And then um, Porno for Pyro's playing. I guess it was Glastonbury where yeah. I saw the orb and like old English from England <laughs> electronic. And I would sit there on the stage with my legs crossed on ecstasy and just trip out <laughs> on these guys. You know, the, the very beginning of uh of the electronic thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The orb orbital uh there were there were some other ones, you know, just this is the very beginning of it. And I just mm. got completely engaged. Yeah. And and then I was so in I've been into it since then. So I would say, you know, since the mid nineties. And um I've uh, I'm still really into it, you know. I I uh ha have a band that I started in 2010 called Lance Herbstrong. We did mashups. It's two DJs and me on guitar. And so we got to play with Pretty Lights, Skrillex, Bass Nectar. Um Sick. we Sick. toured with more Chiba. We we I got to, I actually did more touring, seen more more stuff with Lance Herbstrong than I did with Porn for Pyros. So oh, shit. Um, okay. that was an incredible 10 years from 2010 mm. to 2020, then the pandemic hit. Mm. And then when the pandemic lifted, um, I, uh, you know, the porno thing started coming back, right. and so we right. we've been doing that, and uh, and we're still doing that, and so. But I'm really into electronic music. I love uh, everything from house to dubstep, trance. Yeah. I was really doing. You're trance you're universal, man. You're super or, universal, or, man. You've got a very. Me? You're very universal. You've got a very unique sound. And as a guitarist, uh, particularly your solo stuff, like you're you're taking it in all kinds of directions, man. Like that's what I, I love about you. Like your sound okay. is is orbital. It was like cause you because I know you from porno, right? Yeah. Um like Pets is one of my fucking favorite songs, man. Um uh, but yeah, the, the your electronic stuff, man. Like, yeah, like just how, oh, man? How do you blend your your solo your solo stuff? I'm gonna put a link into this. Um, but your solo stuff is really trippy, man. It's 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 well, unexpected. It's, it's unexpected. Well, it's funny that you say that because I you inspired me when we in between when we talked and you go, I'll see you in twenty minutes. Mm. Uh, uh, hold on, someone's calling in. I had put it on airplane mode, and they're still okay. I sent it to voice. You want to take it? You want to take that call? No, no. <laughs> so okay. I put it on airplane mode, and I don't understand. I guess someone yeah. was calling me on yeah, yeah. Skype or some other messenger or something. Another but, fan. Um, Another fan. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I you inspired me when you said we'll do the meeting today in twenty minutes. Yeah. I went and posted my rambient album cover and my mm. venice underground album cover and mm. i'm going to put that in the threads on my, like on my instagram i have threads of my projects mm. but i didn't have rambient and venice underground and those were mm. like basically solo projects yeah. but i used and like rambient was me and harry gregson williams oh, a shit. top hollywood film composer down, 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 down. yeah because you're you're a movie guy you're a movie well guy. yeah i got in i got in through harry gregson Williams. Oh, okay. I uh, when uh when porno, you know, when, when things fell apart because of me, um I uh I um 
because of a heroin addiction. Um, they went on to do and cancer. They went on to do Jane's, and then I got it together. And uh, and I was like, okay, I, I don't want to tour because I got to work on my health, but I do want to try to jam guitar and in, in movies and stuff. Mm, so mm, mm. well, you've been very different. you've been very successful as a as a, a scoring movie composer. Well, I I've scored a, a couple of, of films, but I've mostly done more than a couple brother. sessions. More than a couple. <laughs> well, I've I've done a lot of uh, <laughs> sessions for a guy named Harry Gregson Williams, right? And he's an incredible composer, mm. top Hollywood composer, and he's helped me out for a couple of decades. And we started by doing Rambia together, and then mm. he just took off as a as a film composer, extremely talented. Um, orchestral composer and so um he's uh opened the door for me and just last night i was at a, his company party and i was hanging out with the most talented people in hollywood that do music for media mm. and i do love music for media and that's where i've made most of my money i guess mm. you would say is through um harry gregson williams helping me right. and giving me uh, squeaks on his films and stuff and then and then also um, making uh, media. Like uh, mm -hmm. I made this movie called Modern American Artists. Doug wrote it, directed it, and was the executive producer. And I co-produced it with him and was in it and, uh, and also did the music for that. I've done the music for some surf films. Mm. Um, yeah, I've seen them. I've, I've done them. Some, some music for, for films. For, I've done a handful of, of composing films where i've done the music myself but right. um but the big 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 stuff was me playing guitar mm. for harry and williams okay if you weren't uh if you weren't a professional musician what do you what do you see yourself you know if if you know obviously you're always successful musician uh, yeah, i always wanted what, to what would you do if you weren't a musician i wanted to be an outlaw you know, and I still do. But the thing about it is, that's what Lance Herbstrong was like. You know, I, yeah, I've always yeah. wanted to be part of Pyros. You know, I've always wanted to be naughty and and break the rules. I guess it was because of, of, I don't know, just that's the in me, you know. But mm. but at the end of the day, um, music. I that's why I got you know into music because of. of well, I just love it. It affects me. It touches me. I remember listening to Elvis Don't Cry Daddy, the song, mm. and just crying like as a little kid. You know, he lost his mother and mm. singing about his mother and, mm. and dying. It was just so sad. So um, that really affected me. But um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. I, I No, I, uh, um, if you weren't a musician, what would you, oh, what, what would what, you be doing? Do? I'm open to anything. I mean, I was in the car business. Um, I was mopping floors, cleaning tools, then started doing oil changes and mm -hmm. spark plugs and tune-ups. Then wow. I tried selling cars to the public, but I wasn't good at that. So then I was a, a gypsy wholesaler where I would go <laughs> in between car dealerships with yeah, yeah, cars yeah. and trade yeah. and try to wholesale them between each other. And then yeah. I got into music. But I'm open to do anything. I was a, a bagger at Vaughn's grocery store uh, <laughs> uh i you've tried done, to sell eel skin wallets door to door you've done a lot of, you've done a lot uh, of stuff i have flowers on by the freeway <laughs> uh, so i got my first electric guitar was selling flowers on wait, Christmas wait how do you how do you get your first wait how do you get your first guitar i need to hear this it was it was i mean my dad had guitars and stuff but the actual electric guitar that i wanted was this hondo that was like a brown that looked like uh, Les Paul, and I wanted it to, you know, like sort of like Jimmy Page. Mm. And uh, so I was selling flowers on the Christmas hall at this time of year for a mm. week mm. until Christmas Eve, and then I got the money. But then the guy who uh, I did it for stole the money and never t gave it to me. And uh, but I forgave him. I ran into him at a Judas Priest concert. <laughs> in the hallway what are you going to do about it i was like nothing you know I was younger and I was older and bigger and so yeah. but yeah god bless yeah. him i want to be forgiven so i forgive him yeah you're a good guy man you got 
you've got, you've well, got a lot just, of beautiful love. You're, you're a loving, spiritual, spiritual guy. I think you've got a lot to give, man, outside of the music. You're, you know, you're very giving as a person. Thank you, Theo. What was it like uh, working with uh, pornos? Oh, well, it was, you know, it was explosive. It's like, hey, okay, we're going to do this. At first, um, we went to Crystal Studios and there was a bunch of musicians and everybody was playing all over the place and I was trying to find a spot to do it. And and the energy and the desperation of of wanting to, a bunch of people to wanting to participate in this. I finally said, you know, I'd just like to play with my brother, Carl, mm. on the second at Lollapalooza, you know, that's what I told Perry. What is, wait, what, what's your brother, what does your brother play? He's a drummer and piano player too, but his name's Carl, just yeah. I don't know. And, yeah. and he was, we were in a band together and and he was on drums and I was on guitar and singing. And so I just wanted to do that. But then we got together again another night and we went to this guy, Skate Master Tate's house. He was a DJ mm-hmm. and he was doing stuff. And then that's when we wrote like, Miha, orgasm, and uh, pets. No, <laughs> I, just, I just want to talk about pets. And <laughs> first female, I think, or so. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. We, we like came up with three riffs right. with this DJ guy, just just yeah, the riffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, wow, this is different than Jane's mm. addiction. This is a DJ element. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. so I was like, okay, well, I'll, we'll we'll do something different. You know, and so. Mm. So that was a lot of fun, and and you know, it was as good as it can get with an extreme addiction disorder, and you know, it was it was as good as it could get, and I played it out as long as I could until um, there was no more the ability. There was no ability to be able to continue with uh my appetite for heroin and cocaine mm. yeah you were you were an at you were an addict and i think yeah. uh one thing i love about you is that you you help uh recovering people right they help yeah it's a it's a give and take so pornos was that your entry to fame I mean, if you do, if you if if you'd allow yeah, me to yeah, definitely. That. It was it was my entry into being a, a a musician that didn't have to have a job, mm. other than music at the time. You mm. know, mm. so I was, uh, I uh, yeah. Once I got into porno for pyros, um, I was taken care of financially from the machine, to only have to do music. Right. Let's talk about pornos for a second. Pets, it's biggest hit, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of jazz in that. There's a lot of jazz in your playing. Like I think, uh, because you're so closely associated with Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction, if if anyone doesn't know who that is, um, they're an alternative band. But you're you're kind of a jazzy guy, man. Like where does where does that come from? What's your inspiration from that? Your like uh, look when I listen to you, you particularly well with with pornos with uh, your solo stuff. There's a lot of like sevenths and ninths. Um, where does that come from, man? I'm glad you noticed it. And uh, well, I grew up in Santa Monica with my one of my best friends is James Baker. He's a guitar player who is in the band at the moment, War, the legendary band War with Lonnie Jordan. Whoa. And we grew up together as kids. Whoa. And we were watching whoa, whoa, Joni whoa, whoa, Mitchell. Whoa. Yes, sir. And yes, so sir. he was really into jazz too. So we would listen to jazz together. And he was more educated and schooled and trained and could read music and stuff. And so I just hung out with him and grew up with him. And He was maybe one year older than me. Yeah, I think one year older than me. Mm -hmm. And and we just, you know, so James Baker helped me a lot with uh, jazz chords and stuff. And just just being into jazz. And then, Mm -hmm. 
you know, I didn't think about like, I'm going to do sevens or nines or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to, I noticed that Jane's addiction was very, was very much blues oriented and stayed around certain keys. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to write a song and all over the neck, like, cause Perry had the range to do it. Right. So I, uh, right. so I, I thought about that and did a lot of chord changes as opposed to, to riffs right. and then did riffs within chords. Mm-hmm. And uh, Forno was always like, if, you know, if, if the chord shape is like this, I'd start moving my pinky around mm-hmm. and fingers. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds yeah, great. Yeah. That was <laughs> I was trying to find yeah, yeah, yeah. melody, harmony that matched what was we were living. Right. So that's basically it. I, I try to find the the sound of what we're experiencing mm. as humans. It's a human yeah. experience. Yes, sir. Translated think, into sonic art. I think that's the thing that's like the difference between Jane's and uh, Porno's. It was like you know you're you got that jazzy. You, you're like a, you're a fucking jazzy guy, man. Mm. And uh, you know it's interesting to hear about your experiences. All right, this uh, because we're guitar players. Um, let me let me hear about your rig, man. What kind of guitar play? What, what kind of guitars you got? What amps are you using? What kind of effects are you using? Talk to me. Well, I um, when I did my solo album, I did it with Michael Blue, and we still have a studio together, uh, Revolver Studios, and I rent a room out of there but also i can use what's there and he can use my room which was like we're like brothers Mm -hmm. and so he has his 1968 plexi so i use that um for an amp um on my solo album the first one then the rest of the records i went direct through line six stuff and did it all on my laptop and so, so the rest of the albums i've done 10 solo albums the first one was done in a studio with tape and and uh, a plexi Gibson and the same pedals I used in Porno for Pyros, which was overdrives, uh, you know, uh, super overdrive, a Vox Wah, um, and a digital delay boss stuff. Yes, and that was it. And and uh, and then singing and writing songs, and then using the bow for overdubs and. So that was my first album, Gratitude. Then the mm. rest of the albums, I just went directly into into a laptop with headphones and used Line 6 software. Okay. And then, um, so I did nine more albums of that. And then I jumped into Lance Herbstrong. And mm. we've done four albums with Lance Herbstrong over the 10 years. And then now I'm doing porno. Mm-hmm. And doing one song at a time and releasing it and having fun with that. And I did do, um, I think it was this year, um, the beginning of the year, I did a a song called First Hit of Wednesday, which is electro guitar stuff yeah. and uh, electro rock, I guess you would say. I don't know, electro punk, whatever. Trying to, but, trying, um, trying, trying to, trying to categorize that, it. Excuse me? Trying to yeah. categorize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, oh, it's just uh, yeah. like... I love your doing shit, electronic man. stuff on the, on yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. computer and then jamming with the guitar, mm-hmm, over, mm-hmm. like really you know fun stuff. So mm. I'm really proud of that. And that's my latest solo. Like I did ten solo albums, more singer songwriter stuff, but there yeah. was electronic and jazz stuff in it and stuff and instrumentals. But I it was mostly just singing songwriter songs. Yeah, that's over a hundred singer songwriter songs mm. over ten albums over ten years. So I. Now I'm more into, or as of the last two songs I've released, they're both laptop guitar songs, mm. no singing. Mm. Um, and uh, so that that's where I'm at right now. I really like electronic yeah. music and jamming. Definitely. Like when I listen to your stuff, it's like um, such a beautiful blend of, um, yeah, it just sounds totally unlike you from you know what I think your fans would know about from like the porno stuff. Um, yeah, it's totally left field, man. Outside of guitar, 
how do you occupy your time if you weren't playing guitar? You know, what, what's your thing? Well, I, I, I love my animals. I have dogs and cats. I love, love my kids. I love my family, my wife. Uh, mm. Try to hang out with all of them. And and, <laughs> uh, and then my extended family, my siblings and their children. And, and uh, so I'm into that. I love surfing. I, sur I like to surf. Yes. Um, I like skating, snowboarding, but I mostly surf when I, for recreation yeah. and exercise and mm. that's it. And then, and then I do a lot of uh, practicing. I talk to Mike Watt every single morning, have been for years. Wow. When we talk about jazz Shit. every okay. morning. Damn. Before the sun comes up, he calls me and we talk about jazz Shit. or read about jazz. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're really into it. You're a jazz guy. Well, I just love it. I'm not, you know, I just love You're a jazz guy. I love, what? You're a jazz guy. No, I wouldn't say I'm a jazz guy. I'm I, I like improvisation. You are a jazz like, guy. Like you know, chords. I'm a punk the, jazz guy. Punk yeah, well, I mean, you're well, I think you're famous for being an an alternative alternative rock, you know, you know, with, with pornos and shit. But um yeah, your chord shapes are, are different, man. Uh, oh. I think uh, when we first uh, met, I I wanted to learn the 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 chords from uh, Pets, and it was like all kinds of sevens. I mean, it was like, I've seen <laughs> I've I've seen stuff online, and it was like that don't feel right. That don't feel right. And I'm like you know, I was like I got I got, I got to call up Pete. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, what kind of projects are you working on, man? Anything we can look out for? Anything? Particular? Well, I just try to do one thing. Well, I, I try to do one thing at a time. And I, when I, uh, um, so right now it's Porno for Pyros. Yes. Uh, in the studio, writing, recording, releasing, doing videos. We did. We filmed a thing for Surfrider, and then I went to Hawaii last week. For, for a week and and I did a movie called Modern American Artists. Oh, so I've seen that. that. Yeah, and so now we're doing a, it. It got like nine badges, so we got funding for the next one, and uh, I think we're. I don't know what the title it is, but it's about um, saving the planet. Saving yeah, the planet. Yeah, healing. I've planet. seen. Yeah, yeah. I've Try, seen, trying to learn and trying yeah. to trying to learn from big wave surfers what they know and trying to figure out what we can do to get better. Right. For the for the earth. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't do this. You can't do that. What would be great is if we could all still live the lifestyle that we do, like drive mm -hmm. cars, fly mm -hmm. airplanes, mm -hmm. um, do do what what we have. But maybe get better at the technology of, uh, you know, not putting out so much carbon, so we don't get extreme, yes, sir. Yes, sir. extreme weather and extreme yes, and and yes, polluting sir. the ocean and stuff like right. that. So I've seen the videos that you've done. Um, I'm gonna put a couple of links into the cool. into the, into this because I know how much you care about the environment, and you and Perry have done. Uh, some videos on like surf and you know the environment and stuff uh, and i guess because you surf the waves you're you're riding the our um our energy from the the planet's energy that you you know how deeply care about that so thank you so much for that thank you very very much man thank you i know, you for I know that you yeah i know really it means a lot to me man um, and I think it was so important that people like yourself, um, you know, draw attention to these things. Who are some of your favorite musicians that have inspired you, but you haven't worked with that you would have loved to have worked with? Gosh, you know, uh, put you on the spot, man. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> that are alive or not alive. I mean, I'm, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm, whatever. I haven't. It's funny because I there's a, a 
a woman from uh, France named Jane. It's spelled J-A-I-N. Um, I really love her music. Um, I really like, like if you said someone, I would pick uh, Bass Nectar. Like I really love uh, that music or, you know, some really cutting edge um, electronic artist. Um, you know, the top DJs in Vegas. I'd love to work with wow, them. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, wow. Vegas. Yeah. Vegas. Well, what's, like, you know, the, what's that, the, man? the I, I love, uh, I love what, to spin your, to spin your shit. <laughs> well, well, just, just to, to write and make new music. Yeah. With, with the, with the cutting yeah. edge dance artists. Right. DJ. Yeah. You know, yeah. All right. Talk to me about some of your favorite guitars. Um, I love my 1955 ES-125 Gibson. Wow. I love my Charvel guitar, the one that they just made for okay. me. It's this white one with gold pickguard. It's, oh, it's great. It's the most versatile guitar I have. And yeah. The latest guitar given to me, and it's what I'll use on the Porno for Pyros tour. Oh, this shit. coming up uh February, March. What kind of what, what, what is it a strap copy? Is it a well Charvel what does it look was like? the very first it was the very first guitar that Eddie Van Halen oh. made the Charvel parts. So it was Charvel. Wow. So it was, I got I got it, turned on to it through Eddie Van Halen watching where do you think that where do you get the parts and stuff. Yeah. And so they just made a latest super strat where that where you can push button and the, the pickups become single coils. They, or they gave they g is this a, is this for you though? They gave you a yeah. They model. gave it to me the gift. Sweet. My, my, uh, Sweet. What kind of what kind of pickups they got in there? They're uh, Seymour Duncan's, I think. Okay. In there. Yeah. Yeah, but what are they like? Uh, humbuckers. Yeah, they're humbuckers. Okay. Yeah, and then cool. you pull up on the volume tab, and they become single coil. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what else you got? Like, what, what, what are your go? What, what's your go-to guitar? I've seen you playing like double necks, man. Yeah. Like, are you I mean, still? Are you still? Can. Are you still doing the double neck thing? Um, not right now. Right. I don't. I don't feel like I need to, you know, like I have a Fender 12 string. I just did Howard Stern with just a 12 string acoustic mm. with Harry and Steven, just us three. So mm. that's my go-to guitar when we're doing mm. acoustic, just us three. But wow. then, you know, I like nylon string guitars. I like, um, wow. okay. I, I did a, a live recording where I played all at once with one mic. Mm. Uh, it's called Man Alone, a thing I did a couple of years ago. Mm. during pandemic time and uh i uh it was just me and a, a martin steel string six string uh, and then um so i i i like all types of guitars mm, mm, and, um, mm. but the most versatile guitar that i have right now is that uh charvel guitar right. that was just yeah. this year hey, is, that, is that is that a custom model it's um it's one that Dan Cleary he is the bass yeah. tech for James Addiction and he's also the guitar and bass tech for uh Porno for Pyros. Right. He went and got me one right. and uh the latest greatest because I was playing a Charvel that I found in a in a pawn shop for the gigs mm. that I did in 2022 with Porno for Pyros. Mm. And I loved it. It was perfect, but then he got this guitar and it just sounds a little better and it it, it the single coils can split. So I took my favorite pieces off of the old black guitar and put them in this white guitar, mm, like mm, the, mm. the 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 L shaped blocker for the whammy bar and stuff like that. Oh, and, I didn't uh, know you, I, you used that. You, I had uh, you use a whammy me. bar. Yeah, I like the Floyd Rose. 